What's up boys, my name is Screaming FNAF and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Five Nights at Freddy's game in Scratch. Now, of course, this will be like separate into parts, so there should be a playlist on my YouTube channel um, of all the parts where you can just follow along. Um, this will be a tutorial in Unity. Uh, I'm using 2019.4, but I think there's a 2020 version, and uh, yeah, I don't think it really matters. I think they just make a little bit of changes. But, uh, yeah, let's just get straight onto the videos. 197 videos for a FNAF game. Alright, I think we can do it in 7 or 8. Um, yeah, see, I was just looking and I was like, why is it not a better tutorial? And then I'm like, I was, I was trying to make a better tutorial so you guys don't have to struggle as much as I did trying to make my own FNAF game. There is one thing you will need, though, for this, um... Uh, for this tutorial, you will need Visual Studio Code. Um, I'm not sure, it, does, it doesn't matter which one you use, but, um... Yeah, Visual Studio Code is something that you are going to need for this, or just any editor, but, uh, you know, Visual, Visual Studio is the best. Right, the main menu for our game. Now, usually I go into Scenes, and it says Sample Scene right here. <clears throat> F2 to rename, like F2 on your keyboard up the top, and I just call this Menu or Main Menu. If it comes up with this, make sure to click Ignore, because if, if you're midway through a scene, um, let me just add a sprite in the... Let's say I've been doing a lot of work on my scene and I want to change it and um, see so yeah, I go I go on my work here I click reload it's gonna delete everything everything from your scene all right now if you load up unity you um, you should be on the default uh, oh wait no where is it the default layout right here you can just go up to layout click default and it should look exactly like mine does um, you can drag your game view this bit up here onto the side so you can see everything that's happening um, but yeah for a FNAF game I usually like to go ahead and um, Change the background to black, so you can go into your main camera up here in the hierarchy. Uh, hierarchy up here. Change the color to whatever color you want, but I I usually like to change it to black. All right, for my tutorial, I'm going to be doing this kind of shadow Bonnie thing. It kind of looks like the new game, the security breach one, just like a fan made model. But yeah, I am going to be using this guy. Uh, if you're wondering how I did that, I just went into Google, looked up FNAF characters. Um, make sure it's a PNG. If it's like this, and you can see the PNG background over here, like it's fake. But, uh, let's go on to Bonnie. You can see that it's PNG over here, but it's got a white background here. That means it's PNG. But I'm going to assume you already know how to make a new project in Unity. Just in case you don't, and you're really confused. Sorry about this, this should be in the start of the video. Go into your Unity Hub, New Project, 2D, then your project name up here. I just named my Five Nights Freddy's tutorial, and I've been making some, uh, some games. Um, I'll rename this in the Hierarchy Animatronic. And now what I want to do is I want to have some text and a button that will let me move on move on um, into the game. So right click on the hierarchy, UI, and create a canvas. And make sure the canvas, this is really important, you go over to here, screen space overlay, change that from overlay to camera, and then drag your main camera in the hierarchy to the render camera. So that will, if I don't do that, you'll see that um, an O, um, it overlays on the screen, but I just want it to be in my camera because it's easier to edit, so I will drag the camera back into here, and it will. I can edit it through my main camera. Um, change constant pixel size, scale with screen size, to 1600, oh, 1600 by 900, because if you go into game right here, you got 16 by 9, and all the, this is uh, the best aspect ratio that most computers use. Uh, so yeah, use this one, uh, it's the best. Um, and then I'll go onto the canvas, right click, UI text mesh pro um, Usually it should ask you to import essentials up here You just got to click import essentials and it should import them in now once you've done that uh, you can just drag it around resize it You can use W to move R to rotate and uh, Oh no W to move it around on the X and Y axis E to rotate it and R to scale it We uh, um, yeah, so you basically only need the move and scale ones for um, Unity 2d but yeah, you can go ahead and edit um, the text down here. I usually like to make it bold, give it a drop shadow, and yeah, that's about it. Also, go up to here on the, um, it should be like a rec transform. Click on this little thing and click shift and alt, and it should look like this. And attach it to the left side, or the left top corner, or the left side, or wherever you want it to go. It, that just means it will stick to this side of the screen. Um, when you switch different aspect ratios. Um, I'll, I'll make this five nights at, um, what should I call this guy? I'll call him, what should I call him? Spectral Bonnies. Boom, we got our, uh, we got our title right here. You can make the text any color you want by just changing the vertex color. Um, 
Oh, I can make it like a... I usually like to have it a, like a nice white. Um, and yeah. Uh, usually in the FNAF, FNAF screens, they have like a... Um, what do you call it? Static? So, uh, where is it? I have a video of TV static, and I just dragged that into my um, project project folder, project manager, whatever. And this is basically what's just going to play on top of the screen. So first, what you want to do to get the video into Unity is create a uh, canvas, UI, raw image, and change the raw image's aspect ratio to 9, uh, the width to 1920, and the height to 1080. Um, and then you can just scale it. Scale it, rotate it, however you want. Um, but yeah, just scale it so it fits inside your screen. And I will change the opacity down a bit because we don't need it that uh, we don't need it full. And go into your project project tab, right click, create custom render texture down here, and I'll call it static. Um, nice. And in our raw image, oh, in our canvas, we want to go onto our canvas, right click, uh, video, video player. Now, just to recap on what we did. Um, we added a custom render texture, right click create custom render texture down here, and our TV static uh, video which you can find on YouTube and you just download it. We added a raw image which you can uh, move around and we added a video player. I am losing my voice. Ah! We added a video player so you can see the video. Nice. Now we want to add our video clip down here into our video player. So go into your video player in the hierarchy put it there and put the volume to zero because you don't want to have that kind of noise just blasting in the background uh, make sure you have it on loop as well drag your static texture your static custom render texture into the um, into the material and now if I go ahead and click play wait no hold on there should be one more thing to do make sure to put the static um, th static render texture inside the target texture for your uh, in your video player. So in your raw image, the texture should be static, and in the video player, um, you should drag your video clip up here and put the target texture to there. So if I click play, it should load in, and you got this nice kind of static effect in the background. Uh, I don't know why it does that. You got to click play for it to refresh, uh, for me at least. But yeah, you can just um, scale the raw image up, and um, yeah. Oh, make sure to go to Canvas up here and click Order and Land. Just do one, so it goes above everything, and you can just change the uh, the opacity of this. You could get, you could even give an animation so it like fades um, in and out of, uh, so it goes like brighter or whatever you want to call it. So go to Create and just call this um, Static Opacity. Boom. Uh, and now in your Static Opacity, you want to go ahead and click the Record button. And you can just um, go into your raw image. Make sure you're on your raw image when you create the um, the animation, by the way. So you've got static opacity. Uh, just zoom out by scrolling with your mouse cursor so you can get like a good 20 seconds in there. Um, and yeah, just change the opacity. So I'll just change it from 57 to 58. You have to change it to something, then change it back to its original thing. If you want it to um, put a keyframe. Put a keyframe right here. Or you could just go add keyframe. Nice, but it's just easier if you like just change the Z position to like 10, then back to 0 or something. So, yeah. And then, once we've done that, I will go to 5 seconds. And then I will set the opacity to 58 again. Yep, okay, whatever, that's good enough. Um, so if we go ahead and click play, go into our game, I'll just drag that up here. And then we got the, uh, the static going on over here, and then it should, um, should just start highlighting. Oh, here's my cat. Back to the tutorial, boys! Alright. Oh, I think I scared my cat a little bit there. You can also add animations to your um, animatronics. So, um, I, I don't know what I'll add to this one. You can make, like, different, cu like, custom different keyframes. Um, but for the sake of the tutorial, I will duplicate our animatronic. And, um, just kind of, like, stretch him. There we go. Yeah! <laughs> Alright, now... Um, I'll just create a, a right click, create empty, and call this um, animatronic, animatronics, and then just drag my two animatronics in here. And then I'll add a component, I'll call this animatronics, and create new script. Actually, I will actually sh I'll show you what I'm doing first. As you can see, what Freddy does right here, his face kind of like glitches out. So if you create like custom, um, what do you call it, custom like... 
uh, custom sprites. Yeah, if you create your own custom sprites with different stuff, you can um, you can do what I'm doing right here. But uh, I just grabbed one off the internet. So this is uh, this is what I got to work with here. So on my animatronics um, animatronics animatronics script, I will go uh, public game object, and I'll call him anim one for our first animatronic, and a public game object anim two for our second animatronic. Actually, I'll um, zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, and anim two, and in my update function, actually no, in my start function, um, I will do start coroutine. Start coroutine. Make sure you spell that right. Parentheses, and then I will call it anim, anims, and then brackets. If you type brackets, it should just automatically put two brackets side by side. But make sure you got the brackets right on this, and you can delete this update function. We don't need it. Um, and an I, you you want to make a new um, I enumerator. So I enumerator, and we'll call it anims because that's the same as up here. Um, yeah, and an anims we will do. Um, Oh, yeah. Before we do that, we want to go into our start function and do anim.setActive to true. Or anim1.setActive to true. And anim2.setActive to false. Um, that will basically make sure that our first animatronic is set to active and our second one isn't. So, uh, yeah. Then we go in our IE enumerator, we go anim1.setActive to true. Yield return new, so yield return new, <clears throat> wait for seconds, um, I'll just do two seconds, so 2f, so 2 float, uh, and then anim2.setActive to true, and anim1.setActive to false. This will basically uh, disable this one and enable this one, and then we can copy this. And then, when we finish all our code, we go start coroutine um, anims. Because that is the coroutine. We, we just want it to um, loop again and again and again and again and again. So we head back into Unity. So if I go to my animatronic manager, um, and I'll drag my first animatronic into anim1, and our second one into anim2, and we hit play. So it's going to go boop, and then it's just going to go back. Actually, 0 0.01 is a really good speed. 0 0.01. You can adjust this to um, however you want. No! The button. The button, the start button, the start button. Um, I will move my text a little bit up and make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And go into your canvas. Right click, UI, button, text mesh pro. And you can just drag this button, resize it. Um, I usually don't like to have the button showing anything, so I just turn the um, opacity to nothing. A button right here, and add a script. I will call this uh, start, oh, start game. And all I need to do in here is, uh, first, first what I need to do is I will make a new scene in our scenes folder called 12am. Where is it? Scene, 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 scene. 12 a.m. And in the scene, make sure you save before you head into the next scene. I will set the screen to black. I will just add some text that says 12 a.m. So um, we can just uh, head on to the next scene. Now we'll save that. Go into our menu. Uh, go into our button right here. And go into our start game script. And we can delete the start and update for, uh, function because we don't need that. And we want to go up here to using Unity Engine. And make a new line with enter and go oh using using unity engine dot scene management. This is important. So if you don't have this, then it's not gonna work because we are gonna be switching scenes with script. So you wanna make a public void, make sure it's public. Start game. Um it, uh, your function cannot be the same as your um, script name. So I'll just go start or oh, load. 12 a.m. Load 12 a.m. And then make sure you put brackets and then curly brackets down here. And then what you want to do is go scene manager dot load scene 12 a.m. Now, um, if you want to get a little bit more complicated, a little bit more fancy, um, you can go to your, uh, you can go file, build settings, and go into your scenes and drag in your main menu first. And your 12 a.m. scene next. And then go back into your script and go scene manager.load scene. 
And then in the brackets, you go scene manager dot get active scene or capitals. Make sure you do capitals in the right spot. Get active scene brackets. This will basically get the uh, the current scene that's um, that you're on right now. So if you're on the menu, it will load the next scene. So if we go into our build settings, you can see we got zero here and one here, and they are uh, corresponding to our scenes. So we'll go into here. We'll go scene manager dot get active scene dot build index this uh the build index is basically this the build index and we will add one to that so it will go to our next scene and if i click play oh wait first what we got to do is we got to go to the button scroll down and it will say on click click that right here drag your button into here or whatever you put the script on so and we can just drag our button into here. No function. We will change no function to start game and load 12 a.m. So now when I click this, it will load up our scene. And then I click night one. And then it's going to load our next scene. Now that's all I'm going to do for now. Um, if you guys want, uh, well, you guys are going to get another tutorial because I can't just not finish the series. But yeah, if you guys want another tutorial, uh, smash like smash subscribe and um i will see you in the next video where we work on office where we're working on office and maybe cameras i might save that for a new video um but yeah see ya